love movies and movie discussions, you've come to the right place. Who am I, you ask? I am The Wiz, and I'm here today to review the 1989 comedy Christmas classic, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, starring Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, and Randy Quaid, directed by Jeremiah Chechik. I, I, I'm getting the feeling that I butchered that name, but Jeremiah Chechik is the director. Sorry. Let's get into the plot. Uh, basically, the Griswold clan, led by the patriarch Clark and his wife uh, Ellen, basically they have Christmas vacation at their home. They invite their families, uh, their grandmothers and grandfathers, dads and whatever, to Christmas vacation uh, for, uh, I think the time frame is two weeks. And from there, hilarity ensues. Really, it's really a very bare bones plot, but it's like an hour and 30 minutes, so it's not like a, a, the plot's entirely necessary in this. This basically is a movie where the plot really doesn't matter. It's more along the lines of, okay, let's get this joke here, this joke there, this joke here, this joke there. That, that's basically the movie, essentially. So let me get to my three points on National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. We'll start with uh, the comedy revolves around Chevy Chase. I'm saying this because all the comedy, everything, with maybe the exception of when Randy Quaid comes on screen, all the comedy is based around Clark and what he does, what he does wrong, and Chevy Chase's reaction. I say this because as I was watching the film, I was thinking to myself, there must be a Chevy Chase film I actually like, right? And I went down the list of Chevy Chase films and I suddenly started realizing, um, no, <laughs> there, there really wasn't one at all. I don't count like Caddyshack movies where he's like a supporting character. I don't count those, but like where he is like the main draw. I really have never liked him. I've never really found him that funny. I've never was really entertained with him. I, I kept an optimistic hope that maybe this would be better. And no, I don't really understand exactly what makes Clark so appealing and what makes Chevy Chase so appealing in this movie. Basically, uh, Clark is an eternal optimist who, who fumbles his way around the movie, trying to do a, a lot of stuff to provide Christmas cheer for everybody. And he just fails at every opportunity. And this can be funny. There are films that do this and are funny. There's shows that do this and they are very funny. I think a great example is Arrested Development. With the exception of one character, everyone in that show is a fuck up. And it's hilarious. But in this movie, I think they want you to bad for Clark. And on top of that, find him hilarious as he's fucking up. It was kind of hard for me to sympathize, laugh with, and laugh at him all at once. I don't think that Chevy Chase could pull that off. And the comedy that Chevy Chase really has is smiling dumbly, facial expressions like, uh-oh, and just basically being like, oh, oh, well, I guess I'll do this now, or I'll oh, keep up the Christmas spirit. It's like, it's kind of grating and annoying at times. I did not find him funny at all, and for a comedy that revolves around him specifically, that's not going to be good. Uh, you can just imagine on that one. Second point, I mentioned this in the first point, but I'll go into more detail. The second point is everything goes wrong comedy with obvious results. I'm going to mention Arrested Development. I know it's not a movie, it's a TV show. I'm going to mention it here because almost all the characters in that show are complete fuck-ups, but they end up doing hilarious things because it's not incredibly obvious what happens, or maybe even if it is, it is obvious what's bound to happen. There's a twist to it that makes it kind of ingenious and funny. In this movie, like you get the formula real quick. Clark tries something, it fails. Clark tries something again, it fails. The problem is the comedy expects you to laugh at what happened specifically. I already knew it was gonna happen as the film went on and on and on. Again, this is the first time I've seen this film. And maybe overhearing it from people like, oh, remember this scene and remember that scene? Like maybe that's the reason why none of it surprised me at all. But on top of that, with it not surprising me, I didn't find it all that funny. I was like, yeah, he's going to fuck up this one. Oh, let me guess. The lights aren't going to go on? Yep. Oh, let me guess. He's going to fall off the... Yep. Uh, oh, and let me guess. Yep. And that was it. That was basically the entire film. Yeah, at no point was I surprised at what was going on. But even then, what was going on wasn't really that funny. It was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Like Every punchline, basically, Clark fucks up. When you're waiting for him to finally fuck up, it's usually the obvious thing that happens. And after a while, it's kind of like, yeah, okay, I, I get it. Like, there are movies that do this on, like, standard Christmas movies or standard comedies. But it's just one element of the movie. This is the major element of the movie where the comedy is, that Clark fucks up something. 
That's it. That's the joke. Oh, oh, what's the funniest part? How about when Clark fucks up? Which part? All of it. Like, it's just like, okay, yeah, fine. Like, I'll say this, though. Towards the end of the film, I started laughing at some of the jokes, but really wasn't enough after going through that entire movie. And my third point, the film is worried more about punchline than setup. One of my biggest issues with this movie is that it just seems like the writers had a great joke. Oh, wouldn't it be funny if this happened? And yeah, you know, and you can think in your head, oh, that's funny. But you need to set up the joke so the punchline can work. And along with the results being obvious, the setup just isn't really thought out very well. I think a key example I, I have in there is when Clark gets stuck in the attic. Like, again, another obvious thing that happens. He's, uh, he's in the attic. Someone's bound to put the stairs up. Oh, look at that. It happens. Okay, great. What basically happens in this scene is that he punches a hole or he kicks a hole into the, the the attic which at that point to me would be like well now that you made a hole you can get out of there which he doesn't which i'm like okay i guess there's another joke happening and basically at the end he starts watching old movies so he watches that then his family comes home and his wife opens up the attic and he falls off oh he was sitting on the stairs the entire time my question is why is he sitting on the stairs why what kind of setup was there could there have been for him to have to sit on the stairs and the answer is there is really no reason for it it's just like wouldn't it be funny if he just fell off the stairs i'm like and that is a lot of the jokes in this movie okay wouldn't it be funny if and then okay so how do we get there who the fuck cares the first joke in the film is when he goes to get the tree and he doesn't have a saw why does he have a saw i don't know he just doesn't like okay yeah to me it was just like there was a, a bunch of uncreative setups for a bunch of punchlines and the punchlines could have worked but without the setup it just doesn't fit very well so i i think honestly one of the biggest problems with this movie aside from like if you don't like chevy chase is that the punchlines had no setup to them or the setup was just very basic and, and a lot of it was just like well then there, it makes no sense why you're doing that oh the only reason you're doing that is because you're setting up a gag which i'm like okay well that's kind of lame so that was a big issue i had with this movie so who do I recommend this for? I recommend this film if you like the National Lampoon's brand of movies. I'm talking like Animal House, Van Wilder, those type of movies specifically. I, there's a bunch of made-for-DVD videos that I know that have National Lampoon's branding. Yeah, I didn't really like Animal House that much either, to be completely honest. But if you like Animal House and you like all the other La National Lampoon movies, you probably have already seen it, so you probably like this movie. So who am I to tell you? And I would also recommend this for people who like Chevy Chase. I'll be honest, going back in my head, the only thing I can think of that I've actually seen Chevy Chase in where I thought he was funny in was Caddyshack and Community. And in Community, he's a belligerent asshole. He is just a awful human being, and I just found him funny in that. As Clark in this, I don't find him very funny, to be completely honest. But if you like Chevy Chase, you know you want to watch this movie because this is a classic for a lot of people. Who do I not recommend this for? If you are annoyed by contrivances and obvious punchlines. I cannot tell you how much the comedy for me did not work in this movie. A lot of it was that the setup for the jokes were so boring or they were so obvious that once the punchline came, I was like, really? That's the direction you went? And then the punchlines are obvious throughout the entire film. It's like everything about this film is essentially obvious. I felt I knew what was going to happen as soon as the scene started. And that hurts in comedy unless you be a little more creative or you have a different type of comedy involved in it. Like there is such a thing as comedy that is very obvious and very broad, but still works because of how it's executed. And I don't think it was executed very well in this. And I don't even think the punchlines and jokes were very good. Well, if it isn't obvious, overall, I do not recommend A National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Man, I I'm gonna tell you, like, I, I got some shit for not liking certain films. Like, I, I hated Christmas Story. I really hated Christmas Story. I thought that was a terrible movie. I don't like this either. I I've known for a while, even, even though I love Christmas, I don't like Christmas movies very much. And this is just cementing that for me, too. Like, this movie was just not funny. And I think a lot of it relies on nostalgia to actually get into it. And I just couldn't get into it because the, the way that they set up the jokes and everything just 
felt very artificial, and it really felt like the only reason the setup was there because someone had a good joke and a good punchline, but they just didn't cross from A to B to get there very well. So overall, I do not recommend National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Uh, put your hate on the comments or on social media. You probably will if you're a huge fan, which it seems like everyone else is. So, yeah. Sorry. Now, if you want my full review on this movie, you can go to my website at, at IamTheWiz.com. You'll have my full written review right on the site, along with a link to the video that has this review that you've just listened to. Thank you for listening to this review. If you want to know what we're reviewing in the next couple days, you can look on the screen right now to see what's coming up next. If you like what you heard, go ahead and leave a like on this video. If you want to discuss your opinion on the film or the review itself, please leave a comment. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the channel. Thank you again for listening. I will talk to you next time.